Hey, internet friends. Situated between Virginia and Maryland is the Virgin Mary, our nation's capital, the District of Columbia. This land is home to all three branches of the federal government, but just below the soil, there exists a subterranean topography known by very few, as it's been forgotten by so many. To the ancient Greeks, the underworld represented a point of no return. It was only their heroes who were able to descend into hell and claw their way back to the world of the living. But this isn't ancient Greece. The only heroes we hear about seem to be masquerading villains. And the tale I have for you isn't one of triumph and ascension, but of mystery, intrigue, and a hell of a lot of dirt. Our story begins in 1866 in New York City with our protagonist, Dr. Dyer, who was born into a family of wealth. His father was an inventor who claimed to have created the telegraph long before Samuel Morse, and he was rumored to have invented a secret tunnel digging device with a patent that was never filed. But the majority of his father's wealth came from patents secured from different dyes, and that money was then invested in real estate. Dr. Dyer's father died when he was merely a child, but the void his father left was filled with very specific research. Research on the insects he began studying as a teenager, eventually earning an impressive education that landed Dr. Dyer as the resident expert on mosquitoes, caterpillars, and moths at the Smithsonian's National Museum in Washington, D.C., where he worked for the majority of his career without compensation. Dr. Dyer was known for his determination of which mosquito species vectored illnesses like Zika. The newspapers painted our Smithsonian scientist as a pretty boring fella, but under a microscope, he was quite the interesting specimen. Dr. Dyer led a double life, one above ground and one below. He was married to two women at once. His first wife was a music teacher with whom he had two children. Dr. Dyer married his second wife, a kindergarten teacher by the name of Waleska Pollock, under an alias, Wilfred P. Allen. Not only did Waleska give him three sons, but she gave him a new outlook on life, a belief system in which Dr. Dyer immersed himself. The Baha'i faith sprung out of Persia in the 1860s and taught the existence of one loving but hands-off God, whose religious truth has been revealed throughout the ages with the voices of the great prophets of the major religions. Moses, Buddha, Jesus, Abraham, Muhammad. To keep it short and sweet, Baha'i is a new age monotheistic religion that basically absorbs all major religions into one, promoting a new world order. Focusing on the marriage of science and religion, the elimination of extreme wealth, extreme poverty, racism, and sexism. While the Baha'i faith has several major houses of worship throughout the world, the administrative headquarters are located in Israel. As you can imagine, leading a double life isn't the easiest of endeavors. No matter how far down the truth is buried, it has a funny way of always being exhumed. News of Dr. Dyer's bigamy eventually found its way into local headlines, with talk of his other life with one of Washington, D.C.'s most prominent proponents of the kindergarten movement, which was followed by a long, drawn-out, and expensive divorce from his first wife. Because of this scandal, he was dismissed from the United States Department of Agriculture for his less-than-desirable behavior as a government employee. However, the tumultuous nature of Dr. Dyer's personal life would serve as the motivational portion of the lore surrounding his most peculiar hobby, tunnel digging. The tunnels began at his first residence, 1512 21st Street Northwest, near what's now known as the DuPont Circle. Dr. Dyer would later claim he began digging for exercise digging so deep in some places that he'd hit the water table. He continued his subterranean hobby at his second residence, 804 B Street Southwest. However, Dr. Dyer didn't just dig tunnels. He fashioned them with intricate designs, lined them with brick, and illuminated them with electricity. Enough light to showcase the architectural marvels of human and animal heads he sculpted along the way in Virgil's words he'd inscribed on one of the archways, Faculus descensus awareno, meaning the descent to the underworld is easy. And maybe the way down was easy for Dr. Dyer, 
or Washington, D.C.'s Mole Man, as he would later be referred to by curious journalists, after a trunk sunk into a collapsed tunnel many years later, in 1924, near Dr. Dyer's former 21st Street home. The papers went wild with speculation as to the purpose of these passageways. Were they being used for espionage, booze smuggling, or perhaps even more nefarious activities? Soon enough, the media learned of the former homeowner's whereabouts, and the man who opened the door wasn't a war spy or a bootlegger. Instead, it was Dr. Dyer, the Smithsonian bug scientist, who claimed to have dug the tunnels for exercise. But let me just pause for a brief moment. Do you buy that story, internet friends? You see, over the course of 20 years, Dr. Dyer built his three-story winding tunnels so well that the District of Columbia even considered using them as a bomb shelter during World War II. While our Smithsonian scientist suffered a stroke at his desk and died in his early 60s, talk of his tunnels occasionally made headlines every now and then even post-mortem, but eventually it was said that the B Street tunnels, along with Dr. Dyer's old residence, were destroyed. However, the DuPont Circle tunnels happen to be so well-built that they still remain in some form, even to this day. Is it possible that the affluent Dr. Dyer tried to earn back his fortune after his expensive divorce? Perhaps from underground bootlegging? Did his Baha'i faith give him some sort of motivation to dig straight to hell? Was he just a man who wanted an escape from the drama of his double life? Or were these tunnels used for something darker? For things that only take place in the shadows? The Hellfire Club is the name given to several exclusive clubs throughout Britain and Ireland during the 18th century, reserved for persons of quality only, namely the upper echelon and prominent political figures. Underground, this elite secret society reportedly performed occult ritual sacrifices along with sexual acts and other forms of entertainment for a very specific audience. I mean, could it have been possible that somewhere between our nation's founding, the fallout of the American Civil War and the pre-World War era, that the Hellfire Club traveled across the pond only to dwell beneath our nation's capital? Who can say, really? Besides Benjamin Franklin, who was said to have attended his own share of meetings during his time in England. We could speculate all day on exactly who or what motivated Dr. Dyer to dig those tunnels. The majority of the somewhat reliable information that was written about Dr. Dyer's tunnels was published in the newspapers, pre-World War II. The rest has been recently circulated by the Smithsonian Museum and the Washington Post, with public trust in both somewhat shaky at best. While the group of museums known as the Smithsonian was originally funded by a British man, but is now run by the United States government and houses millions of pieces of artwork, artifacts, and specimens, throughout the years, they've encountered one major critique. That, while they educate the general public, they also repress or destroy important pieces of history. Given the CIA's involvement with the American press throughout the decades, I'm sure it comes as no surprise to anyone that the Washington Post and the CIA are directly tied nowadays. And no one even bothers to cover up this fact. The owner of the Washington Post is Jeff Bezos, the founder and CEO of Amazon.com, a technology company which has contracts with the CIA to the tune of hundreds of millions of dollars. Meaning Jeff Bezos has a financial stake in maintaining good relations with the CIA. So the Washington Post isn't exactly gonna spill the tea on the big scary old CIA. But you know, tunnel networks exist under every major city across the world. So it doesn't mean the tunnel systems are necessarily being used for nefarious purposes. Presumably there's plenty of non-sketchy reasons why a government or an individual would construct and utilize underground passages. But there's something about Dr. Dyer's tunnels and the mystery that surrounds them that gives me pause. Do you know what I mean? So let me know what you think, internet friends. What motivated Dr. Dyer to dig these tunnels? What were the tunnels used for? Do you buy the original story? And though it's said that the tunnels near DuPont Circle are barred off, do you reckon they're still used to this day? You know, I always look forward to reading your comments. Thank you so much for watching, subscribing, and supporting my channel on Patreon. Bye! No one ever sees me, sees me.